Welcome to BizTax Technology Show, the show where we feature technology companies operating globally, talking about their solutions and how they make a difference to their customers' businesses. Now, today we speak to Keith Long, CEO of Leet Inc., and Gerard Milan, VP and Head of Content Business Development at Smart Philippines. Now, Lead Technology is an international esports and gaming technology company, while Smart Communications, or Smart as it's known in the Philippines, is a wholly owned wireless communication and digital service subsidiary of PLDT Inc., Philippines' largest and only integrated telco uh, company. Now, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. Hi, Gerard. Hi, Brian. Good to be here. Hey, Keith. Yeah. Now, before we start, I'm going to ask you, Keith, about LEED. Tell us about your products and services and the history of your formation. Okay. Uh, So LEED, we started in 2017. Uh, It was a startup company that we built uh, and we went along building a, uh, we desired to actually build up a platform with the intention of actually giving businesses an opportunity to immerse itself into the e-commerce, uh, e- e-sports gaming ecosystem space. Um, I came from a background of game publishing. I spent 20 years in that. And from there, when we built the platform, we quickly expanded ourselves out of Malaysia because Malaysia is not a, you know, e-sports is all around the world, right? And you know, to, for us to actually expand into Southeast Asia, the first market that we actually went into was uh, uh, Philippines. And that's where we also set up the operations there. And then that's how I met Sir Gerard. And that's how we actually connected onto multiple projects at that time. So we, we tried a online version uh, of a tournament that they, they ran on our platform at that time. And subsequently we did, I think another three other projects in uh, 2020 uh, to do the same online tournaments. And that gave us an idea about, you know, how do we then gift ownership of such a platform to our partners and empower them to actually reach out to their users uh, aside from us just doing you know your typical customer acquisition we work with our partners because we believe that esports is inclusive it has to be uh, you know you need corporations to partner with us in order to drive esports and competitive gaming to a different level and that's what we've been doing with smart uh, we spent a good whole year, 2021, to figure out what kind of mechanism was right for the market. And we actually developed, enhanced our product to deliver such a service. And then we actually launched it in uh, last month. Okay. Now, yeah. over to you, Gerard. When did smarts push into esports uh, commence? Um, well, Brian, you know, uh, PLDT Group and, and Smart have been long-time uh, supporters of Philippine uh, esports, uh, Philippine sports for that matter, right? You know, taking inspiration from our chairman, Mr. Manny Pangalina, and our president and CEO, uh, Al Panlilio, um, we have been supportive of, of, of a variety of uh, Filipino sports and Filipino athletes. Um and we are leading in terms of support for esports um, in the country, um, all the way from the professional leagues to the amateur leagues, and even down to the grassroots uh, esports gaming communities. Right, and and we believe that esports is is one of those fields and one of those sports where Filipinos can really excel in. Right, so um, we've done quite a lot of work with game developers. Um, we build our network to be very strong, reliable, and resilient enough to support uh, better experiences for gaming. And we work with partners, like in this case with Lead, to deliver um, you know, different ways to engage uh, the sports community. Okay, so Gerard, taking this forward then, how does this platform with Lead, uh, how is it different from your other offerings to your subscribers in the Philippines? You know, Geek Arena, we're very proud uh, to have launched this platform. It's the, it's the first of its kind, all-in-one platform in the Philippines that runs uh, tournaments on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Um, we actually have an arena store within the platform uh, that allows our customers to buy their telco load 
Uh, and moving forward, we're going to start also distributing uh, gaming pins and gaming items. Uh, allows them to enjoy the, the games and play the games even more. And we also have a payment mechanism built into the platform that allows them to uh, pay for certain items and also uh, take out their winnings. Because we do offer uh, exciting prize pool for each of the tournaments that we run um, on the platform. So uh, we have um, moved in a way from uh, selling or distributing a, a core telco services uh, and now with this platform moving to, to you know, more digital lifestyle uh, services for our customers. It, it drives okay. additional revenue streams and helps us retain and uh, engage our customers better. Now, Keith, I want to uh, uh, switch to you. Tell us about your white label platform and why is it unique for Asia? Okay. Um, I think when we built this platform, uh, ours, right? We understood that when we go to different clients of ours, uh, they will have different needs. So not everyone will be, you know, like smart has their very specific needs about what they want. And what we have done is actually built the platform in a very modular scale at the level where, you know, you can actually pick and choose what you want. So in the case of smart, um, you know, they, they wanted a ticketing based system as opposed to you know a subscription based system and they wanted different kind of uh, features to have in the system and we actually just uh, with our platform right we can actually just modularize take those components out and then package it together into a product for them and being able to deliver that product in a very quick fashion so at the same time i think uh, what we have done is we have also gone through it is not just a product on the front end. It's actually a deep integration with smart. And just like with our other partners as well, we actually integrate into the back end of their systems, which is which is highly proprietary, isn't it? For every telco. And that's that's the the the, the uniqueness of our systems where we are able to get that kind of uh, a level of integration with them. And also one of the things I suppose is because and that requires not just a, it's not a technology thing, it's also a trust thing, because you are obviously worked with them for a number of years, and, and that level of trust and comfort is there with each other. Correct. And we, we, we ourselves pride ourselves to make sure that our, our systems are on the enterprise level, uh, security, data privacies. You know, um, I know Gerard's hair almost turned gray with data privacy, but that's, <laughs> you know, but that's the layer, that's the level of support uh, we provide. Aside from those kinds of, you know, services, we actually provide an end-to-end -end service, meaning we are also operating all the tournaments for them. We are managing their stocks in terms of the assets or whatever they're selling in the store. Uh, we support them with, our customer service and technical support. So we actually work and we work with their marketing and business teams to further enhance the product as we go along. So it's a good cohesiveness because, um, you know, smart, um, for example, right? They don't have the expertise to run e-sport tournaments or understand the players. It will, it will require a lot of capex and resources for them. And what we have done so is we've taken that and managed it for them and we work with what they do best, which is how they market to their users. Yes. And Gerard, then how do you see the mobile telco business changing in the Philippines with obviously offerings like Smart Giga Arena, which allows you to obviously have developed new revenue models, but also have greater customer int intimacy with your subscribers? Yeah, so I think as you would know, and most of your viewers would know, it is uh, becoming more and more challenging to extract more value uh, from, from the current base of users, right? So coming up with new platforms like this and new business models allows us to, to stretch and then generate new uh, revenue streams. But I guess more importantly, to engage our customers better. In this example, you're talking about the mobile gaming community and being able to join tournaments uh, that are uh, frequent and are easy to, to, to join uh, and where you get chances to win actually stimulates 
uh, more activity. Um, and, and for us, for our business, that would translate to more uh, data usage uh, from playing mobile games, more purchase of our data products for gaming, uh, and obviously stickiness across our, our customers. And, and also gives us a level of um, uh, brand love from our customers that, uh, that now rely on smart uh, to be able to enjoy playing uh, the games that they love uh, with their friends and with other mobile gamers across the country. Now, Keith, I want to take a macro view and for us to to to, to step out a little bit. Okay. How big is the esports market in Asia right now? Um, I think as of end end of twenty twenty one, I think the valuation of the the market in uh, globally, was about a billion US. It's 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 on a growth path. A lot of it are typically on sponsorships, but what we are focused on right now is the casual competitive gaming. Okay. Uh, we while while we are looking at that because you while you have your professional level tournaments right up to your tier at a niche yeah. level, right? You get the whole. You have ninety percent or even ninety five percent of the users who still love playing games, they still love a simple competition. So they don't, they don't, they don't necessarily train for it or you know, be a pro team. And they just want to have a chance to you know, win something. And that's what we actually offer because smart audiences and a large number of those audiences are gamers in general anyway. And gaming has been the backbone of you know, um, a lot of these data consumptions for a long time. So what we focus on is the casual gaming market, which is way much bigger than what you see of the esports industry right now. And I think we, by having such a platform, we are able to integrate that two elements of casual gaming, and we'll bring in the esports where, for example, with Smart, they have already this, uh, they are on the pro series circuits, right? They are a big supporter of that. And we, we want them to bring these two elements together. So you can be an audience. You can also participate into a simple tournament. And you can also watch your favorite teams play. And that's why we, we call it the all-in-one giga arena system. Okay, Gerard, what are some key trends that we should be watching out for in casual gaming as well as the whole esports industry across the region? Well, I think, uh, as Keith had mentioned, uh, you're going to see a lot more activity in the grassroots level. Um, there are already a number of, of players and um, initiatives across the professional esports uh, league. Um, but I think where the scale will come from are from the grassroots communities, right? And it's the same for, for the sports that we are supporting as well, whether it's basketball or volleyball here in the Philippines. It's really about you know, getting a lot more people from the different provinces that are already playing these games uh, and, and bringing them together uh, in, in, in a platform like this or in a community platform like this where they can come together and, uh, and, and play against each other and battle it out. And, and, you'll, and you'll see more and more of that uh, coming in as we build this platform even further and add in more games um, onto the platform and more tournaments in, in the coming months. Yep. But Gerard, in the Filipino market, um, are the, uh, the partnerships and sponsorships that you have um, that or you have planned for Smart Giga Arena, what sort of brands are partnering with you? Um, we are talking to a lot of different uh, partners now. A lot of them are still in flight, so I, I won't be able to mention any of the names, but there are a lot of interested uh, brands from, you know, mostly uh, FMCG G. companies um, and energy drink companies, et cetera, that are, that are already into the space. If you look at the professional esports leagues, uh, and they're also realizing that uh, the expansion is going to come from a lot of these grassroots activities and, and events. Right? And over the course of the pandemic, a lot we, we've uh, curtailed a lot of the on-ground uh, activities. So a, it is a very, very good opportunity for an online platform like this uh, for brands to uh, continue to engage their audience when it comes to esports. Now, Keith, 
On the 21st of October last year, you commenced training uh, on the OTC market in the US as a result of a merger. Uh, tell us about your merger and, and um, what your plans are moving forward. Okay, um, I think back in uh, October last year, we one of the reasons why we went on a listed entity in the US, and I think in terms of the, the, the route that we took was a M&A route at which we uh, did an M&A on a company that was already listed on the OTC market. And that actually brought us into the OTC markets fairly quickly, right? It was about, I think, three months that got us into it. And I think one of the other reasons, obviously, that we listed in the US is because the capital markets there are very much more receptive of such a business as compared to the local markets here. Um, and when we did that, uh, very quickly, we also need one of the reasons when we deal with corporates like Smart is disclosures. We need to make sure that we are fully disclosing our business, our business practices, as well as our financials into any partners that we work with, especially with the telco industry. And one of the best ways, you know, instead of background checks and things like that, we are already listed in the US. We are complying, fully compliant to US laws. And we actually do use that as a good means of being able to break grounds with a lot of our partners. So um, that, that listing has, has uh, commenced. I mean, we are in OTC QB right now. And we have plans this year itself to uplist the NASDAQ. Okay. And what sort of revenue are you forecasting and profit for this year? Uh, well, with, with, with what's happening with SMART, uh, we obviously you know, anticipate that our revenues will be growing a whole lot more than last year. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of, a few other projects in hand. I think that the last two years has been a incubation period for us. It's a lot of learning grounds. It's a lot of, you know, filling the waters, especially with, you know, even if it's smart um, and a few other projects of ours, but a lot of them because of the markets opening up and that's, you know, a lot more certainty about what's going to happen in the world the next couple of, uh, you know, months ahead, right? There's no more closures. There's no more sudden, uh, you know, pandemics that's actually happening that there's a lot more uh, confidence in taking the product forward. And this is where I think with Smart, we, you know, we accelerated the launch and some of our partners as well, we're accelerating the launch as well. So I do anticipate that, you know, we will, we will be looking at a higher revenue stream for this year. Um, on the profitability, I think there's a lot more investments into tech. And we do always plan to make sure that our product is always uh, up to date. It has to be. Uh, and also, it's also for the benefits of all our partners like Smart. Okay, so in terms of guidance, because you are a public company on the OTC, what sort of guidance do you have for this financial year? Um, sorry. From a you... revenue standpoint. Okay. Uh, well, we are, we are looking at about um close to well, i would say probably 200 percent growth from what it was no, in terms of top line numbers top line numbers is it yeah. um we are looking at about five mil okay us dollars right yeah. yes okay. okay with a with a with a possible break even by the end of the year um so this is something that we are actually looking at from a uh, projection standpoint. Okay. Yeah. So obviously part of it is smart and we are very committed with smart to make it happen. Now, gentlemen, it's been a fascinating conversation, but before we leave, um, perhaps we could have some final words uh, from each one of you. I'm going to start with Gerard. Yeah. First of all, Brian, thank you. And uh, thank you to your viewers also for giving us the time uh, today. Um, we are very uh, proud of the platform that we have introduced into the market along with our partner sleep. Uh, and we look forward to, to more, um, uh, to building more engagement with this platform across our customers here in the Philippines. Uh, uh, Keith, final words from you. Uh, and anyways, Brian, thanks for this session. And I think thanks, thank you, Gerard, for giving us the opportunity to work with you. I think for our commitment on lead side, we are always committed to making sure that we build the better products. We build future solutions for them. 
and we want to be able to give a um, strong sense of belonging back to our partners as well when they deliver this product to their end users as well. And that's that's the fulfillment that I want to give. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much for taking the time to come on the show. I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Keith Long, the CEO of Lead Inc., and Gerard Milan, VP and Head of Content Business Development at Smart Philippines on BizTag's technology show. This video and podcast will be on our various platforms as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thank you very much for tuning in.